on Sports Radio WGAM, The Game. And it's brought to you by Golf and Ski Warehouse, featuring Northern New England's largest golf selection at everyday low prices, locally owned and operated since 1989. Owl's Nest Golf Club. Visit owlsnestgolf.com for information on great golf and stay packages. Golf USA, the brands, the selection, the know-how. Before you go to play, go to Golf USA. Located at 707 Milford Road in Merrimack. Amherst Country Club. Make your tea time today at amherstcountryclub.com. Welcome to the New England Golf Radio Show. I am J.J. Truman. It is U.S. Open Sunday, and you have to be fired up. It doesn't matter how many strokes ahead he is. You have to be fired up this Sunday. Happy Father's Day to everybody out there. It's also Father's Day, a very important event for people across the country. So make sure you connect with your father. Say hello. Say happy Father's Day. Take him out to the course. Play a few holes, play nine, play 18, play 36, do whatever you got to do today. Enjoy that time with your father. We got Chris Arcan behind the board this morning. He is in full celebration mode, not only for the U.S. Open, but the Bruins Championship, which they took down, and he is fired up about that. So he's got some extra juice this morning. Chris, how you doing? Doing very well. Happy Father's Day to everybody out there, and uh, it's a beautiful Sunday for the first time in a while, so that's uh, it's very nice. Absolutely. It's nice that we're in here with some nice weather outside. We got a full show today we have so much to talk about we have the FedEx St. Jude from last week we'll talk about that briefly obviously we're going to get deep into the U.S. Open talk that's the story (laughs) that's the story of the week Um, we have some LPGA Futures Tour tickets to give away to the event at Beaver Meadow and Concord so make sure you listen in you'll have an opportunity to call in and chat with us about a few different things we're going to have Brian Krause on from Divity.com he's going to talk about his website and it's a really interesting website that can benefit a lot of us out there and if you take a look at it and you get a chance to look at it you'll hear what he has to say and you'll understand it a little bit more so let's talk about the FedEx St. Jude last week it was the fourth playoff in six weeks Harrison Frazier took the victory in a playoff hole on a par three, Robert Carlson, him and Robert Carlson battled all day long, went to four or five extra extra holes, got to a par three. Carlson pulled his, his tee shot to the left in the rough, failed to get it up and down. Frazier hit the green, two-putted to victory. Good for Frazier. Uh, his first win on tour, as we said, a Texas guy coming in and, and does a lot of different things, golf course design, a bunch of different things. He's been on the tour forever, so it's nice to see him get that win. Carlson, uh, uh, the big Swede that we said, hits the ball a mile, failed to get his ball up and down in that situation, and it, and it was just it, it was an eventful Sunday for sure, something that we've all probably forgotten at this point because the U.S. Open's going on and everybody's all fired up about that. So FedEx St. Jude, congratulations to Harrison Frazier. Good win. Hopefully he'll get a couple more on his resume before his career ends. Now that we've gone over that, let's jump right into the U.S. Open. As we talked about last year, or not last year, last week, it's played at Congressional Country Club on the blue course, par 71. The USG actually stretched this course out to 7,500 yards, which is a long golf course for anybody, even PGA Tour pros, although they're not making it look so long because they're hitting it so far down there this week. 7,500 yards is a long, long way. There's a lot of elevated tees. There's a lot of elevated approach shots. So there's a little bit of, there's a little bit of, I guess, uh, dynamic to this course that the PGA Tour pros need to think about and make sure that they take those certain things into account when you're teeing off from a tee box that's 25 feet or 20, 26 feet above the fairway. You have to take into account how far down, how much further your ball is going to go. Of course, they're accustomed to doing that. They're used to playing at elevation. They've done it a million times. They had an opportunity to get out and play practice rounds, walk the course, come up with a game plan for their caddy. Some of the interesting holes on this course this is the 10th hole. It's a 225-yard par 3, although they did have the tees up yesterday. I think it was about a one. 76 yesterday a lot of guys hitting hitting uh, eight iron seven iron into that into that green yesterday but on Thursday at 225 has water in the front bunkers in the back relatively hard green for the soft conditions down there certainly a difficult shot Rory McIlroy bogeyed it yesterday but one of those holes that you want to see people play because it's interesting <laughs> it's packed it's it's got a gallery atmosphere there it's right by the clubhouse and the guys you can see feel the pressure when they get off there all Interestingly enough, guys started out on 10 on Thursday and Friday. They won't do that since it's the weekend. They'll all start on one. But Phil dropped a double on Thursday, first hole of the U.S. Open, and, and you just I had to feel bad for him there because Phil we'll, Phil has so many downfalls in the U.S. Open over the years, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. So number 10, that par 3, certainly one you want to watch. The other one that I like to watch is 18, 525-yard 
par four. It's downhill. This is where Rory made his double bogey on Friday, pulling his tee shot to the left and then hitting in the water. Phil also hit it in the water on Friday there. The second shot is usually a mid to long iron, except for those guys that are bombing it out there. I think Rory had eight iron in there yesterday, which to me on a 525-yard par four even though it's downhill, is just absolutely amazing. I mean, you're, you're hitting – there's par fives out there that, that I can't get to in 525 with driver three wood. So just think yeah, about it. Downhill or not. Yeah, man. it doesn't matter. No wind. wind. It's just – it's amazing that, that he's hitting eight iron into that green. And, and I think the one he hit in the water, he actually hit a seven iron. Um, and he but, hit the green, too. It's not like – it didn't go straight in the water, did it? No, yeah. Well, it landed, it landed just a little bit short. But, yeah, had a little bit too much draw on it and, and had that side spin on it, which brought it down into the water. But – it, amazingly enough, these guys are just absolutely killing the ball down there. Uh, so there, there's two holes that you should definitely pay attention to today. They're fun to watch the guys play. Certainly going to challenge them. Also, if you hit a good drive or you hit a good tee shot on 10, an opportunity for birdie. So fun holes to watch. Uh, we'll talk, we talked about the rough last week. The USGA has set this course up a little bit different, I think, than they traditionally do, and we'll get into this a little bit more later. But it's graduated rough, so that just means that the further you get from the fairway, the further the rough is. So uh, the the intermediate rough, so to speak, right next to the fairway, not as bad to negotiate as it is 20 yards off the fairway. Well, probably not 20 yards because the galleries will have uh, stomped that down. But but 15 yards or 10 yards off the fairways, their guys are getting some some tough lies, and you saw Rory get a tough lie and made the smart play yesterday, chipped out and, and hit a wedge up close and made his par anyway. But the rough, not as de- deep and thick right off the fairway as the USG traditionally has it, uh, which I think is an interesting thing. Uh, the fairways were a lot softer than expected. We talked about last week how guys would want to hit cut shots. The reason they'd want to hit cut shots, even though if you look at the golf course, the layout looks like it favors a draw, is because a cut shot will land a little bit softer and they can get control that and keep it from running through the fairway the fairways have been so soft due to the rain at night this week that guys are just bombing draws down there so it, that's really had an impact on what they're playing off the tee the type of shot shape they're playing and how they're controlling their their uh, tee shots so the usga is just like i said well known for having ultra hard fairways which prevents you from hitting that hard draw because the roll you just can't control it once it gets on the ground so guys typically hit a cut however this week they're able to just bomb it out there the greens not a lot of complaints about the greens davis love the third had something to say about them on thursday said they were a little bit bumpy a little bit dried out however the rain at overnight there's been one rain delay there might be a little more rain today has allowed them to soften up which really really is to the player's advantage they can fire right at the greens they don't have to worry about catching a hard skip bumping off the back all those sort of things the weather down there today is supposed to be variably cloudy maybe some showers in the afternoon as i mentioned uh all in all, it should be pretty good weather. As I said, the course is soft. Uh, watching the pre uh, the pregame this morning on Golf Channel, talking about drying out the greens, trying to get some moisture out of there so they can get them running really fast today, which who knows how that will impact the guys in the field. It, at this point, I think they're fairly confident with the golf course, and we'll see how Rory responds to that. But I think he's got, he's got everything going on all cylinders, so I'm not sure that will have too much of an effect on him. The thing I want to talk about, though, is the USGA reputation. It's got a reputation in the golf world for setting up courses – to be ultra hard, even for PGA Tour pros. Their their stick, so to speak, is that they set up the course so hard that even PGA Tour pros are going to struggle, and you don't see guys putting up big numbers like 14 under and, and, and dropping it. guys, 20 guys under par yesterday on a Saturday at the U.S. Open. It's sort of unheard of, and they haven't lived up to that reputation this week. However, the flip side of that is when they set the, the course up so it's so hard, you get a lot of players complaining. If you think about Shinnecock, it, uh, that still comes up to this day when you see Ernie Els hits a 10-foot putt and it lips out and rolls off the green. Yeah. And course is being unfair. And you know we're not a fan of people being un- or players calling courses unfair on this show. I hate to hear guys say that. So, Chris, what do you think about that? The reputation of the USGA is that, hey, we're going to challenge these guys and – the players are saying, "No, oh, give us a chance to make some birdies. You know, ease up on us a little bit. It's it's the U.S. Open. People want to see birdies. How does that dynamic play out in this? And I mean, right now, it seems like the USGA is taking criticism from a lot of people because Rory's at 14 under. Like I said yesterday, 20 guys under par on a Saturday at a U.S. Open, not usual. So, what's the dynamic there? How does that how's that working out this week? Well, unless we're witnessing a revolution in, in golf, I don't think that whatever they were doing to make the course super hard." is really working anymore, as we can tell by these low scores. However, and this is just my opinion, I'm not speaking for anybody other than myself, I love it when there's a really, really hard course and these pros are putting up scores that 
I might put up, you know? <laughs> That's right. Not like that I would put up, ever put up, you know, it's better than I would do even on yeah. my best day. But just to see them not, just to see it not come so easy to them and to see them really have to struggle and really have to make decisions and, and go for like risks that they wouldn't have to on a, on a easier course, I think is really interesting. And we see them play so well so often and it all comes easy. And yeah, we want to see birdies and we want to see eagles and whatever. Mm -hmm. But I also kind of want to see them have to really work for it, you know, have to really struggle and, and overcome, you know, a rough day and a rough, and a rough, uh, a rough course. I think that's uh, really interesting. Right, and and it's and, and part of it is too the reputation that the USGA has built up with these players. It's expected that they're not going to play well right. at the Open. I mean, when you t you hear guys talk about what the winning score is going to be before the week, Graham McDowell played a practice round up there about three four weeks ago. He said the winning score is going to be over par here when the USGA gets a hold of this place. Obviously, that's not the case. I agree. I want to see a really hard course. I want to see really hard fairways. I want to see really hard greens. I want to see these guys challenged every single day, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. <laughs> that doesn't mean that you can't set up some of the par fives to give them a chance to make eagle, set up some of the par threes where they have an opportunity to make birdie. However, I want to see on the hard holes, make them really hard for these guys. Make them earn it. Now, this week I think has been a little bit different. You can't control the weather. It's rained down there every night. It's been soft. That's certainly had an impact on the way the golf course plays. It, it, it's going to play a little bit longer, but it also gives these guys the confidence to hit the ball as far as they want because they know it's not going to go anywhere when it hits the ground. So that's an interesting thing. And the, and the players, although you, you do hear it in, in some situations, Shinnecock was obviously out of control. But the players, they need to accept that challenge. They need to step up and say, you know what, everybody's playing the same golf course. Everybody's playing under, under the same conditions. Exactly. So let's let's step up and play the best that we can. And, and in all these really hard holes, yeah, I want to be challenged. As a player, they should want to be challenged too. Let's not say that the place is unfair and, and complain about that. I also think an interesting aspect to this is on Thursday – it seemed as though everybody that started the tournament had this idea about a round par is going to be good for the first round. A round par is going to be good. Rory McIlroy came out with a completely different mindset. I think he just said, you know what, no, I can shoot 65 on this golf course. He didn't say, yeah, a round par is going to be good. It's going to get me in the mix. And that allowed him to have the confidence and the wherewithal to just go out and do it. I think once he did it, other guys caught on to that mindset and said, you know what? We could shoot 65 out here, too. I don't know if the conditions are – they're easier, but they're not as easy as people are making them out to be. I think it's part of the mindset and the reputation that the USGA GA has going into these tournaments that they want around par to win. And, and to see guys go out and fire numbers is fun. At the same time, I, uh, I want to see them challenged. And you did see some of those challenges. If you watch Phil's first round, he hit it absolutely all over the place. He he was hitting all sorts of weird and crazy shots. He was hitting second round, he hit driver off the deck. First round, he hit a bunch of punch shots. I, I mean, and you could just see mentally, Phil was in a place that you don't see him in in a regular PGA Tour event just because he was all over the place. And that's what the U.S. Open does. Uh, and I enjoy watching that. And you want to see the best players in the world's world challenged. So... All in all, is the course too easy this week because of the number that's posted, or is it okay? I mean, I know we like to see a hard course, but is it? do you think it's just too easy? Is this too much? Should the USGA do something? Should they postpone today's round and make them play Monday and let the place dry out or something? <laughs> No, nah, you can't do that. It's, uh, you know, it's Sunday. This is the, this is the day. It's, uh, you know, like you said, you can't control the weather. And um, in terms of, of majors now, the U.S. Open is not really standing out for any reason other than the fact that McElroy is making this historic charge and that this Sunday is basically going to be, or today is going to be his victory lap unless something monumental happens here. Right, unless something dramatic happens, that will be the history. And I think, I think it is a little bit too easy, but what are you going to do? The USGA is doing everything they can. They have an aerating system underneath the greens. They're trying to dry them out. They have an aerating system underneath the fairways. How much does that cost, by the way? That's got to be expensive. Yeah. <laughs> but, but they're trying to dry this stuff out. They're doing their best to make it as hard as they can. At this point, doesn't really matter. Uh, as you know, Rory is, is, is on point. It, he's in full control of his swing. It looks like he's poised to win. Speaking of Roy, let's get into him for a little bit here. He's, in, as we said, complete control. Former U.S. Opens, finished T10 in 2009 at Bethpage Black, missed the cut in 2010 at Pebble Beach. If he wins, he's going to be the fifth youngest winner of the U.S. Open. There's a couple guys that won it. You know, Francis Wimette won it back in the day in his teens, which was just, just a phenomenal story. Great movie about that as well. Um, Rory's first round, shot a 65, as I said, just came out in that mindset, I'm going to hit it 
<laughs> exactly where I want on every single shot that I want, and and I can shoot 65 on this golf course. And if you watched it, it was just unbelievable. You you haven't I you haven't seen anybody do it since Tiger in 2000 at Pebble Beach. I mean, just a guy that's oozing confidence and, and just placing it. Second round comes out 67. Doubles the 18th, as we talked about, hit his drive over in the left rough. Maybe got a little bit too aggressive with the second shot. Maybe didn't. How can you blame him? Hits it in the water. Doesn't get it up and down for bogey, but doubles that. Uh, third round yesterday, 68. Bogey the 10th, which is the par 3 we talked about earlier. But otherwise had complete control. Was just laser-like with, with his golf ball. I mean, exactly where he wants to hit it every single time. First player to reach 14 under in a U.S. Open. He's got the lowest 54 hole score ever in the U.S. Open. And in the last 10, 11 rounds in major championships, he's had 10 under par. Now, that's barring, the obviously, the 80 at the Masters that everybody's talking about. That's really good, though. Which, but if you think about that, in major championships, as we talked about, in the U.S., she has the reputation, but the other majors as well, for setting up the golf course extremely hard. 10 rounds under par out of 11 in his last 11 major championships. Amazing. The guy's poised to break a ton of records, set the single scoring record uh, for three rounds, beat Jim Furyk. He's got 199. Jim Furyk had 200. Unbelievable control of his swing. Unbelievable to watch. And today, even though he's ahead by eight, you have to be interested to see how he's going to hit the golf ball and to watch, just to watch him ooze confidence the way he is and hit the ball, I feel like it, it could make you a better golfer. I mean, you're watching him and you're going, wow, this dude is just under control. Uh, in second, you got Y.E. Yang. He's the closest guy. As we said, minus six, eight shots back. He beat P Tiger in the PGA in 2009 when he was six strokes behind. He's a guy that's steady, hits the ball in the fairway, loves to hit hybrids from the fairway, which was interesting on this course because it's so long. Certainly not a, as long of a hitter as Rory, but a steady guy, keeps his golf ball controlled, keeps it in the middle of the fairway. You think he's got a chance? Eight shots back, Chris? No. <laughs> I love the honesty. I love the honesty. That's what we like on this show. Straight up honesty. Then we got Lee Westwood at minus five. His his big bump in the road was his first round. He shot a 75. He came out with a goal yesterday to get within five or six of Rory. He, he, he didn't do that, obviously, but ha had a great round, shot a 65. He's got a good relationship with Rory. They have the same agent. And, and some people are now trying to build this thing up between him and Rory, where now he's, he's kind of upset that Rory's going to take the spotlight away from him. We'll see how all that plays out. I don't think Lee's got a chance today. I'm sure he'll go out and play well. However, no pressure on him. He's just got to go shoot the best number he can. Got Jason Day in the mix, which I think is interesting because we talk a lot on this show about the young guns. He shot a 32 on the back nine yesterday, finished second at the Masters playing with Adam Scott. He absolutely bombs it off the tee. This kid hits some huge tee shots. Is he part of the future of golf, too? Just 23 years old, him and Rory? Is that is that going to be the young guns that we talk about more and more on this show? I don't see why not. Yeah. It's, it's, he's doing a great showing today, and, and yeah, you know, it, no, no one's touching Rory, really, but anyone who's down there in the lower tier, especially at that age, you have to take notice. And of. I agree with you. At 23 years old, the way he's played in these major championships, watch out for him moving forward. He, he's going to be a force, certainly. You got Robert Gregarious, and this guy just absolutely bombs it. It's his first major. He made some putts yesterday. He's at minus five. And a guy that we briefly mentioned on a couple show or last show, Sergio Garcia, minus four, T6. His name has come up. Is he back? He, you know, he's not warming up before his round. That's probably helping his mental <laughs> his mental state. He's not getting upset at the way he's hitting the ball and, and helping him think less when he's on the golf course. Is he back now, Chris? I don't know. I hope not. Watching watching Sergio Garcia play golf like stresses me out. Like, he's one of the, you know what I mean? He's one of those guys when you see him, you're just like, oh my god, just get on with it already. Too nervous. Too nervous. Uh, and he then makes he, me nervous. Yeah. <laughs> and then, too much thinking going on there, Sergio. And then we got Phil, the guy that everybody loves, who's missed so many opportunities in the U.S. Open. He's got five runner-up finishes in the U.S. Open. He's been that close. He, as I said, he's driving it all over the place. His short game has been helping him out. He hit some really interesting shots. An interesting thing that I saw was he was working with Butch Harmon on his swing on Friday morning. Usually you don't see players working on their swing before they're going to play in a U.S. Open round. Okay, we're going to take a break here. We'll get into more U.S. Open talk when we come back, and uh, we'll go through a few more players. We'll talk about some stuff, give you guys an opportunity to call in, win four tickets to an LPGA Futures Tour event at Beaver Meadow right here on the next segment on WGAM.